The foreclosure phenomenon that we're having is, is a product of excess leveraging that sort of has to uh, be backed out of the system. From a public policy point of view, I think you have to keep in mind that um, while a fairly significant percentage of mortgages are going into foreclosure, maybe three or four percent, you know, that means 96 percent of people are still making their mortgage payments and doing what they agreed to do by contract. So when you think about public policy that might bail people out of that situation, I think you have to really worry about what sort of signal is that sending. We do have a housing glut. I think you, uh, and what does that mean? Is that the number of houses that are available for sale exceeds the number of people that are looking for houses. So supply and demand are sort of out of balance right now. Um, this was caused, this particular situation that we have is caused by the fact that uh, lots of houses are coming back on the market because of foreclosure. It's also caused by the fact that builders are still building houses. That, that speculative building cycle that we had going um, is still going on. I mean, you can't just stop in the middle of a house, and many of them had a lot of money tied up in land, and they're saying, well, I might not make as much money as I thought I was going to make when I started this project, but I'm surely not going to make any money if I just stop. The problem, as I see it, isn't that we had mortgage contracts that had adjustable rates and interest rates changed. Uh, because in fact, the interest rates that adjustable rate contracts would be indexed off of right now are going down. The problem was that when we had adjustable rate contracts where lenders required nothing down or lenders did not require that you certify or document your income. You know, you had these the um, contracts that people, they had funny sort of names where the income was unknown, there was no down payment, um, you could actually borrow more than the house was worth at the time, and then at some distant point out here, maybe as far, you know, as far out as two years, then your interest rate was going to go from zero to some positive number. And that positive number was built into the contract so that regardless of what had happened to market interest rate, your rate was going to go from a fairly low rate to something that wasn't zero. So you see, that's, it, it's wrong to try to say all adjustable rate contracts, adjustable rate mortgages are bad. But some of these things really flew in the face of logic. Just like when you're, you're investing in the stock market and, and you would say right now, well, there's a lot of bargains out there. Uh, but people might say, well, that price is going to be even lower if you wait a couple more months because we haven't hit the bottom. Same mentality would apply to the housing market. So um, I think in some parts of the country, home values are going to continue to decline. Um, in other parts of the country, home values are going up at double digit rates. So the answer to your question really depends on which part of the country you're sitting in. Uh, but definitely um, in Florida, Las Vegas, Arizona, California, places where home values went up rapidly and now they're coming back down rapidly, um, the next year or so probably will be, you will have opportunities to get houses for quite a bit less than what they were worth a couple of years ago. In some parts of the country where the median value of a house is like $500,000, you can see that there was a restriction on that secondary market for those sort of mortgages. 
uh, now that restriction is not going to be binding and that should help people going into those markets still buying expensive houses but they're not, they weren't as, as expensive as, as they used to be. Um, so that, that makes it so the market might work. Now one of the things that could slow that down is that lenders are substantially more risk averse now than they used to be. So now maybe I could get a mortgage for $550,000 and there's a secondary market for that, but my lender now might require a much higher interest rate than what I was able to get before. Right? So I'm still going to probably face some restrictive terms. So you know, things don't stay the same as we go through some of these policy changes. Good on the one hand, but there could be um, greater difficulty getting credit on the other hand.